with the Prince of Wales visiting the future Queen Catherine in hospital and the current Queen Camilla supporting the King, Charles, as he prepares for his prostate operation, the public face of the family now lies in the hands of Princess Anne and Prince Edward. But the main question is, where are the Sussexes in all of this? No word whatsoever. Strange. They do like the limelight, after all. Former BBC Royal Correspondent Michael Cole joins us now. Michael, very good evening to you. Welcome to the show. Um, a shocking day yesterday when those two stories sort of came out almost back to back, um, uh, that, uh, that Catherine, Princess of Wales, was in hospital and would be there for another two weeks, not to be seen probably uh, for a couple of months. Then King Charles with his enlarged prostate. Um, but let's start with our friends in uh, Montecito, Harry and Meghan. I mean, normally you'd expect them to be at least leaking somewhere about how they're trying to come back to visit and they'd love to see the king, but he's blocking the idea and doesn't want to talk to them or something. But there's very sort of stony silence from California. What's going on? Uh, good evening, Mike. You make an excellent point and I'd expect nothing other than excellent points. Uh, to adapt uh, that song we're all familiar with, from Camelot, I wonder what the prince is thinking tonight. <laughs> there he is in his own little Camelot on a California hilltop 5,000 miles away. Yes. We have to remember how popular that man was, we're seeing there. He was uh, served with distinction twice in Afghanistan. People loved him. He had a wonderful way, his mother's way with people. And then, unaccountably, he scooted off to Canada and then onto California, which may have been Meghan Markle's destination all the time. Mm. And now is the moment when he could have been doing such wonderful work and a starring role for her too, had they not decided to take that decision, which has never been really fully explained. It's the greatest sadness, and I'm sure that in his heart of hearts, maybe he, he feels that too. He says he misses this country, he misses the culture, he misses the people. He misses the traditions. Well, uh, now is the time when the country might actually miss him. Because as you say, the king is going into hospital next week. Uh, the Princess of Wales having her third night in hospital uh, with maybe 10 more of those to come. Uh, it's a moment when the royal family needs all hands on deck. And the king has quite rightly, in my mind, slimmed down the royal family to the direct line of succession himself, uh, Prince William, and then the three uh, children, uh, George uh, and Charlotte and Louis. Uh, but, 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 that means that the effectively 15 uh, royals that were working beforehand is now slimmed down to 10 or 11 uh, because the first Sussexes have decamped to California. And of course, uh, Prince uh, Andrew, uh, who we see in the background there, the Duke of York, he, of course, is no longer acceptable anywhere. And it would be very difficult for his two poss possibly very charming and cl kind and nice daughters, uh, Beatrice and Eugenie. They couldn't really do foreign jobs, uh, royal jobs, without immediately evoking the memory of their father. And that's a very great sadness. So they can't be called upon. So it's now down to... Uh, the Queen, who we just saw there with the King coming out of uh, St Mary's Church at Sandringham this Christmas, and Princess Anne, uh, Prince Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh, and, and his wife Sophie to carry the can. But I think it's a great loss, mm. and I think that um, in his heart of hearts, if he really thinks about it, uh, Prince Harry will regard this as a great missed opportunity when he could have rebuilt his bridges with the British people. Absolutely. Because it could have been all so different, couldn't it, Michael? You know, it didn't have to be this way. You know, they could have left, they could have taken themselves out of the sort of front line, if you like, but they could have still maintained some kind of level of contact which was not malevolent. And unfortunately, because we now know what we know after the publication of the book Spare, after we saw um, the fact that, uh, you know, when the Queen died, we now know that uh, um, Harry did not spend the following night um, with his father and his brother, that those, you know, um, relationships are more or less completely ruined, never to be repaired. We also know that the, the Princess of Wales, Catherine and Meghan, haven't spoken, I think, for years, practically. And, you know, it's all very toxic. And, and this is why it should have been done differently, because at times like this, when you have a family, you want to have people that you can rely on around you, right? Absolutely. You mentioned Spare, of course, this time last year, Mike. We... We were talking about Spare, it had only just been published, and of course uh, it was ghost written uh, by a very clever American 
a journalist. Mm. I'm, I don't know whether even Prince Harry r read through the proofs, but it says some pretty horrible, unkind and cruel things about the king and the queen, Queen Camilla, uh, but notably about his, bro his brother, uh, and most of all about his sister-in-law, who I think has played a pretty faultless role in her time. After all, she wasn't born into a royal role, but she's taken to it like a duck to water, a very elegant duck, I might say, perhaps a swan. And uh, she didn't deserve those cruel remarks. And there she is tonight, Catherine, Princess of Wales, in, in hospital. And let me just tell you this, Michael, uh, this is not a minor thing. This is not uh, nothing. Uh, to keep her in hospital for 14 days, well, these days, as you know, the hospitals, as soon as you're ambulatory, as long as you're on your feet, mm. you're out the door and you're convalescing at home. And that's the same even at posh people's uh, clinics like the London Clinic is, yeah. uh, where probably it's a, a pleasure to be, to be waited upon. But they want them out. Mm. And here we have, you know, you're seeing what that princess has been doing ever since she assumed this role. She's been faultless. She's great with people. She looks wonderful. Uh, she is admirable in many, many, many ways. And I think I can't think of a serious mistake she's made. And of course, uh, she's been devoted to her good causes. Um, as the old Queen Mary, the great -grand grandmother of, of the King said, we are the royal family. Uh, we love hospitals and we're never tired. And I think from the very, very beginning, Catherine has been uh, to hospitals. In fact, her first speaking engagement was at the East Anglian Children's Hospice, and she made a good speech there. Uh, she hasn't, uh, uh, she has, she hasn't, she did, she wasn't born to it, uh, but she's taken up the reins very well, and she's a perfect foil uh, for Prince William. But interesting to see today that he went there. He was there uh, when she had this planned procedure on Tuesday. He didn't speak to anybody when he left. I think it will be indicative that when she is making improvements, when she's getting a lot better, I expect we'll see the Prince of Wales come out on the pavement and say a few well-chosen words about his wife's condition. And we'll see over the weekend, perhaps, uh, when they're out of school, maybe the children going there to see their mother, because I'm quite sure that they miss her, mm. and I'm sure that she misses them. I'm sure. Michael, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Michael Cole.